Hello there, YouTube. This is Necrosiva, and we are back. Of course, this is the Lithio Battle Association, and we're we're heading towards the end here of the uh, of the overall league. I believe this is week um, ten, and of course, week ten is up against the Leicester City Swaglets. Um, they're coached by Swaglet, of course. So, lots of uh, work cut out for us once again. I realize I'm saying that a lot in these matchups, but I'm battling against some really, really skilled opponents. Uh, Ayn and I planned really, really carefully for this opponent with monsters like Garchomp, Tentacruel, Arcanine, Metagross, Vaporeon, Amoongus, Megalatias, Zapdos, Sanchino, and Heracross. He had some power and some serious speed on his side as well. Uh, we did end up going with a uh, a very defensive garb odor with Rocky Helmet. This serves as a good overall check to Sinchino, and if he wants to go for coverage moves like Flare Blitz or uh, Close Combat for Mark and I, I can switch in there. And if I can set up some Toxic Spikes, or rather Spikes in this situation, because I knew he had Tentacruel and Amoongus, Toxic Spikes not really the best idea. Could really put some pressure on his team. Uh, we also had Offensive Whimsicott, I had a dual Dragon Dance core, that's right, you do see a Charizard there. We traded the Scandinavian Stalins and Skyrender for his Charizard X that we wanted at the beginning of the season. We finally have it here in week 10, we traded Dragonite for that. So an excellent trade, and now I have the draft that I wanted at the beginning of the draft, oddly enough. Um, so a dual Dragon Dance core, both running Adamant with just enough speed basically. He had some serious bulk, so I wanted the extra power from Adamant. I also have a modest Agility Porygon, and then just the standard uh, Life War Mammal Swine. Um, I knew with Mammal Swine, I could kind of clean up against Latias and Zapdos, and to a lesser extent, Garchomp, which normally runs Yachi Berry. But uh, Swaglet was running some really unique sets, particularly on things like his Arcanine, and that those just really gave me, they threw me for a loop in this battle. Now, seeing that he starts off with Sinchino is a huge red flag that it's scarfed. I do not want to stay in here with Mammoth Spine because he can go for Bullet Speed and one hit KO me, or I guess five hit KO me very easily. Garbodor is the easy switch here. It is supposed to be the dedicated check to Sinchino. And uh, since he's running Scarf Sinchino, that seems to be his overall check to anything getting up a Dragon Dance boost. Because even at plus one, Scarf Sinchino would still outspeed them. Now, as he goes into Garchomp right here, Earthquake kind of nukes the team that I brought. I was considering uh, something like Air Balloon on some of these Pokemon, but even uh, Whimsicott, who resists the Earthquake, gets to it KO'd by a Life Orb Earthquake, and he might even be running an Adamant Nature. Uh, actually, we traded sets, so I'll, I'll go over some of those sets in the end. But at the time, I didn't know if he was Adamant or Jolly, basically. Um, but he gets up his Stealth Rocks, which is unfortunate that they went up this early, because I, I really, that is why I put Roost on Charizard instead of Thunder Punch. I ended up not bringing any type of hazard control or taunt or anything. Um, he has Air Balloon on his Arcanine, which is just like, as soon as I come, saw it coming in, I was like, it's probably Air Balloon. And that means I can't even touch it, whereas he can blow my Mammal Swine away. So I'm going to need to go into Garbodor here. The switch is very obvious and he sees it coming. But Garbodor with max HP defensement is no slash on the defensive front. Uh, that is a more bulky o Arcanine overall. I was very pleased with how Garbodor took that uh, Bulldoze, though. Um, I did just go for Pain Split. We are running Spikes, Gunk Shot, Drain Punch, and Pain Split. Uh, the Drain Punch was really just there to have a way to hit the Metagross if it came down to it, which, I don't know. I, I couldn't think of anything else to do in that last slot, so I didn't use Drain Punch anyway. But uh, against Tentacruel, this is not a good matchup just because he can go for special attacks. Scald or... Scald or Hydro Pump or anything like that are going to hurt a good bit. Uh, for those of you who are uninitiated and don't know the base speeds, Tentacruel has base 100 speed, so that means that speed tides with Charizard, or in this situation, if he does not have a certain investment, or rather if I don't have a certain investment, he will outspeed me. So it was really risky here to uh, go for a Roost, because if he either was max speed or uh, the plus speed nature, he would have outsped and KO'd me. But fortunately, we have a very hefty speed investment at 244, which is just enough speed to outspeed uh, a Heracross with a Choice Scarf um, at plus one if we get up a Dragon Dance. Um, I did this whole time though, I was just roosting going, please don't get poison, please don't get poison, please don't get poison. 
And I did decide, okay, we need to see what type of investment he has. It does look like he is either more specially defensive or at the very least he has some speed or he's just not invested on defense because a defensive tentacruel really uh, would only take right around 50 to 60% from a dragon claw, even if I am adamant. But uh, I think this is about as good as I'm going to be able to do as far as HP after this roost. And I'm still really worried about getting poison. He just has, he could have spun away my hazards, but then he would have gotten out of this with Charizard at almost full HP. And uh, he would have gotten rid of the hazards, yes, but they really only hamper his Arcanine out of all the Pokemon he has, because Amoongus has Regenerator. Uh, the Sinchino is kind of a hit and run type deal. Not really weak. Vaporeon can heal itself. He has options around the entry hazards there, so... Um, now we got rid of Tentacruel, so that's one wall down. We still have to break down the Amoongus and the... Um, uh, what if he, if he did decide to bring a more bulky Garchomp again at this point? Didn't know what he had. Now is when I find out the powerhouse that is Garchomp. As my, this is an offensive Whimsicott comes in, takes over half from a resisted hit. What is that power? Holy shmoly Magikarp there. Um, I did think, okay, the Moonblast is really obvious. He might be going out into his Arcanine. So I make a pretty risky switcher if he had gone for Earthquake. Um, that would have been huge because I would have lost my Sinchino check. Uh, but I, in two move, in in one move, I get rid of two things here. I get rid of the toxic spikes, which is nice because now he can't put those back up, and he actually switches into his Amoongus, which is great. So I can pain split here. I do decide just to go for Gunk Shot to kind of see what type of Amoongus he is. Uh, he switches in the Sinchino, expecting the pain split, or maybe for me to set up some more uh, spikes, and I actually managed to hit the Gunk Shot and take out the Sinchino. So. Put one point up for God Bodor a couple weeks ago. He was missing Specs Focus Blast. Now he's throwing around trash cans. So I will. He's he's trying to, to make up for it some. I actually think I got that God Bodor from Vishwa on Twitter. So I will have to leave his link in the description there because it's coming through something serious right now. Unfortunately, back into this 50 50 position with the Garchomp. And since he is a life orb, there's a chance that even my Feraligator won't be able to take the hit. Um, but after all that life orb recoil, he's now well in range of the uh, Ice Shard. And I was hoping he would switch into Arcanine here just so I could break that stupid air balloon. But he actually goes down to Vaporeon. I was very close to going for Earthquake predicting Vaporeon. But I thought that was too I thought that was too easy to switch Arcanine into. So at least if I went for Ice Shard, I would hit something. That was my uh, thinking there. Even though I did basically negligible damage going for the Ice Shard, I did get the information that Vaporeon has leftovers. So that's cool. Uh, we are gonna go out at this point here to Garbodor. I figured if I could take a Scald, I could have an opportunity to Pain Split and just eat up all of Vaporeon's yummy, yummy, yummy high HP stat. That's what the goal here was. He sees that coming and switches out. It actually goes back into Garchomp, which means I will take a little bit of HP off of Garchomp, but I'm not going to get back nearly as much health, which is unfortunate. Uh, I, I probably should have gone for Spikes there, really or rather realistically, because even if he did go for another Scald or something, the extra spikes would have been good chip damage against the rest of his team. So I don't have a switch in for Garchomp. Have to let Garbodor go down. He did such a great job this battle, getting rid of the toxic spikes, pressuring Sinchino, and uh, even getting off a little bit of extra chip damage against the Pokemon. So we're in a Mammoth Wine now. I don't want to overpredict. Still just going to keep on going for Ice Shard. And this works out in this circumstance because I think he predicted me to overpredict. And I just can't mess around with Garchomp. I'm not in a position to switch into that monster. And now that Arcanine is back, uh, I am going to use this opportunity to go into Feraligator thinking, eh, I think he's going to go for a fire type move. Fleur Blitz does a little bit more than I expected it to, but it's still not enough for him to KO me unless he has Wild Charge. And if he uses Wild Charge, he's going to take pretty horrendous recoil. Uh, very, very funny story. I actually had this Feraligator max attack, max speed adamant. And not really thinking about much, I put the four extra EVs into special defense. Now his Amoongus is Yachi Berry Amoongus, which means Ice Punch isn't even going to come close to one hit KOing it. But those magical four EVs allow for Alligator to hold on, it looks like. Because that, that roll was a good, it wasn't necessarily in his favor, but it was a 50-50 and having those four EVs may have pushed it more to my favor. That is very nice, because now I force him into Arcanine, 
and he has to go for extreme speed if he wants to KO my Feraligator. So I much prefer that situation. Um, he's still on that stupid balloon. That balloon is just taunting me at this point because it just needs to go away. So I was thinking he probably has in that last slot is probably Morning Sun, just based on the way he's been playing Arcanine. And I figured I can go into Porygon here and either set up an agility, I can just try attack him, I have options because it doesn't look like he has uh, the close combat. Uh, Flare Blitz, funnily enough, on my Porygon Z, I had uh, enough speed to outspeed Scarf Garchomp after going to plus two with agility. And the rest was in my defenses and my special defense and HP. I think I put four in HP and a couple here. And right there, I couldn't figure out a good way to optimize it. So I figured I'd just spread it out. But I think that that investment saved me against Arcanine's uh, move as well. So that was fantastic. And Arcanine being so bulky means Porygon Z outspeeds it. And then even though I was at minus one, he doesn't have any speed investment on Vaporeon. So we're able to do a lot of damage with the Tri-Attack before Porygon goes down. That modest nature really coming in handy. Uh, here he protects as I bring out Mammal Swine just to try to get a little bit more left for his recovery. If he's gonna live it, he has to. He you gotta give it that last ditch effort there. I definitely don't hate on that at all. But this is a life or Mammal Swine's earthquake, and so with the adamant nature, it's going to be able to drop the uh, Vaporeon. So that right there was actually a pretty close match overall. At the end of it, I only had my. Mammal Swine and my Charizard left. So a very, very um, narrow 2-0, uh, but just a, it's a fantastic battle. That battle was really intense, and I was pretty pleased with the result overall. Now, as far as the sets went, it was pretty important that I, I put some of those EVs where I did, but that's that wasn't necessarily good prep. That was just, I had some left over and I put them where they made the most sense to me. It ended up coming into play, that won't always happen, especially in league play. But um, I do think that against the Pokemon he brought, since he didn't bring, I, I really thought he'd be bringing Metagross. I didn't see him bringing as many things as he brought weak to ice, but the Yachi Berry Amoongus was just so, so, so effective there. If I hadn't had that extra HP there, that would have been a completely different end game. Because then he would have KO'd my Feraligator, gotten back a lot of health from the Giga Drain, and then I would have had to go into, I guess, Porygon Z and go for the Ice Beam, and then he could have just switched out into his Arcanine. It would have been a really, really weird uh, end game there where the ending's not as clear cut. So thank you very much, Swaglet, for the battle, sir. I definitely enjoyed it. For week 11, that is the penultimate week of the Lithio Battle Association. We're actually up against the Pori Blazigans, and that's going to be intense. Also, somewhere in there, I get to go back for week seven and battle the Lati Azumarils. There was a huge miscommunication as far as timing and all this other stuff like that. So uh, we need to go back and do that battle. But as it stands right now, we are in the playoffs. We just need to keep this pain train going. So um, yeah, let's keep it going. Let's keep on doing the best that we can. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good day, guys. Bye.